Welcome to part 3 of my tutorial series on using PyMol to visualize proteins. This video will go over some advanced imaging and how to create high quality videos of your protein. If you do not know how to acquire a PDB file, go back to part 1. If you are unfamiliar with PyMol and using it to create images, go back to part 2. If you understand PyMol and wish to make a 3D model of your protein, go forwards to part 4. We're currently looking at a T7 RNA polymerase from the T7 bacteriophage. I've selected this protein from the PDB as it contains DNA and RNA, which can be nice to visualize. We select the residues of interest in the normal way. In this case, the single nucleotides are the RNA and the denucleotides are the DNA. The second bit of DNA is the template strand for the polymerase. This clip has been sped up, but it may serve to remind you how to make separate objects from residues. As well as creating objects for the template and non-template DNA, I have created a total DNA object to allow for easy manipulation. Now that we have our objects, we can manipulate them individually. As usual, we will start by hiding everything before identifying our DNA and RNA as cartoons. By identifying the RNA, we can also see how the nucleotide groups of the template DNA face inwards towards the RNA, whilst the non-template is left apparently free. Pressing action, find polar contacts, the hydrogen bonds are identified, illustrating where the DNA has been separated for the polymerase to produce the RNA. I'm now going to label the RNA green and the DNA two different shades of red to allow for easy differentiation. To create a final image, we're going to want to see some of the RNA polymerase around the DNA. By showing the surface slightly transparent, we get a fairly informative scene ready for ray tracing. Adjust your surface colour and background to your taste, and don't forget to change the ray trace mode if you want a more artistic outcome for your image. You can see here a clipping artifact. This is easily removed by rolling the mouse wheel forward. This is the final ray traced image. Images can be good for illustrating scenes such as for the RNA polymerase, but sometimes it isn't enough. Sometimes a video is required to add more detail to the scene. A movie in Pymol is really a set of frames stitched together, so in some ways, producing a video is very similar to producing an image. We'll start with the basics. To create a rotating loop of your protein, go to Movie, Program, Camera Loop, Y Roll, and select your loop length. By pressing the Play button at the top right hand, or using the command M Play, your camera will rotate around your object in a loop. Press Stop or use M Stop to stop the video. In this example, the camera loop has produced 240 frames, as can be seen in the bottom right. We want to ray trace each frame before compiling to make our basic video. Use the command set ray trace frame 1 to turn on ray tracing. Go to File, Save Movie As, PNG Files and create a folder for the images to be placed in. This is the final product of PyMol, 240 ray traced images for each frame in the video. Open up Windows Live Movie Maker on Windows 7, or Windows Movie Maker on Windows 8 to compile the images. Click and drag the images into Windows Movie Maker. Select all of the files and change the duration of each image to 0.03 seconds to match the movie's frame rate. You'll find this option under the Edit tab. Take a quick preview of your video to check for any errors. If there are any glitchy moments, it's likely that an image or two are out of place, typically at the start or the end. Find the files which will be numbered and put them in the right order. 
Go back to the Home tab and at the top right of the screen click the Save Movie option. The Movie Maker should compile your images into a smooth movie. Let's move on to a more complex video. Start off by entering the command mset1x100, creating an empty video of 100 frames. Move the camera to where you want the video to start and enter mview store. Enter frame 100 to select the 100th frame of the video. Move the camera to where you would like the video to end before entering mview store. You may want to set orthoscopic view off, which will create a depth of field in your video. Use set field of view 50 to 70 to create depth. 20 is the default if you would like to revert this change. After each mView store, Pymol will automatically reinterpolate the frames, creating a path for the camera to move between stored frames smoothly. Type frame 1 and mPlay to start your video. Because we used the first and last frame of our 100 frame video, when looped we have a snapback effect. If you would like a loopable video, for instance to use in a PowerPoint presentation, then we need the video to be smoother. To do this we use the first frame and select a frame before the 100th for our final end view. In this case I use the 80th. This gives 20 frames for the software to interpolate back to the original frame, allowing the video to be smoothly looped. Let's move on to a more advanced video with multiple different frames. For this video, I've selected one chain of the four component neuraminidase enzyme from the avian influenza virus, as well as the drug oseltamivir, or Tamiflu as its ligand. This protein is important to drug discovery due to repeat scares from avian flu and the threat of a pandemic, along with reports of resistance to current drug treatments. Here you can see me identifying the ligand before isolating the protein using the command create protein chain A. By colouring the protein grey, it contrasts well with the yellow ligand. As we created a new object for the protein, the original still exists and needs to be hidden to hide its colouring. We can now clearly see the ligand. When we show the surface of the protein, the binding site becomes very apparent. For drug discovering scientists, they may use this to try and engineer a new drug that would still fit into the binding site but not confer resistance. To make the ligand more obvious, we'll turn it into a stick and ball model that you may have seen in an older lecture or workshop. Set the colour of the ligand by element before using the command show spheres ligand to create the balls. To make them smaller, use the command set sphere scale 0.3. As you can see, this creates a nice stick and ball model that contrasts well to the grey protein backdrop. To make our more complex movie, we will create several scenes of frames and then stitch them together as we did before. Our first scene will be a rotation around the whole protein. Using the command set cache frame 0, we can reduce the workload on our PC. The command set movie loop 0 will stop our movie looping, as this is only one of three final scenes. We create the initial video with m set 1180 before using the command util.mroll 1181 to create the rotation. Then, as before, we save our movie as a set of PNGs. Make sure that ray tracing is enabled first. Let's move on to scene 2, clearing the first movie program by movie remove last program. Set up the video as before, this time with 60 frames. We're going to zoom into the binding site, similar to our previous video. MView store the first frame at the end of the same camera position as the first scene, before moving to frame 60, zooming into the binding site and storing the final MView. view. 
Return to frame 1 and save the movie using a different name to the first scene. It's time for our final scene. Move to frame 60 before clearing the last movie program. We want to get a close look at the binding site with the ligand. I decided on using the pre-programmed 4 second Y rock at 30 degrees and let Pymore generate the final frames. If you want to preview your video, you have to first turn frame ray tracing off. When you are happy with the scene, make sure you turn it back on before saving it as before. We now have our final set of frames and it's time to stitch it back together once again using the Windows Movie Maker. Make sure that all the frames are in the right order. It is likely some have been put in the wrong place due to the large number of frames we are compiling. Luckily this is easy as each frame is numbered. Remember to select all frames and set their duration to 0.03 seconds before saving the movie. This could take a long time. Thanks for watching my tutorials on visualizing proteins with Pymol. I hope it has been informative and that you are now equipped to create high quality images and videos of proteins. If you would like to 3D print a protein, please check out part 4 of the series.